Alright, hello folks, and today we are going to be doing a little bit more customization, this time a little more in depth, you know, with some tips and tricks on how to make stuff. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, so, let's open up our symbol designer. Uh, these are a couple of symbols I made. Uh, this is my graffiti symbol and logo. I use it on my car. And this is basically using a very simple trick where I have one set of letters that is all in white. And then what you do is you duplicate them all in a second color, drop them under, and um, you use the skew and the resizing tools um, to change the way the accents look. So you see how each of them has like a little bit of black there and there. Well, it's because I warped them, like, for example, um, if I wanted to, I could take this S and just sort of expand it a little to the side to make it stick out a little more, you know? And then, uh, maybe, maybe skew it a little bit, nah, like that. You know, say, maybe, maybe I don't like the way this T is, let's say it's not emphasized enough. Well, I could kind of widen it out a little bit. Just a bit, though. You don't want to overdo it. And, you know, skewing gives you that kind of an effect to it. So, you just want to do a very subtle skew to give it an outline on one side, but not the other. And yeah, that's pretty much how it works. And then you can also actually take it and physically move it around to give you the accent where you want. So, if I wanted the accent to be underneath, I do it kind of like that, you know. And if I want it to be more like up and off to the side, you know, you could do that. And if if you think it's a little long, shorten it. You know, and uh it's the same kind of trick with this, the chevron. This right here, the gold is inlaid with a secondary layer that's black and underneath it to give it a kind of a frame effect. Uh, and the wings are actually the ones that have the most spread. As you can see, the black wings are kind of shorter. And this looks a lot nicer on a black background. Um, so let's save that, and let's load up another symbol. Like this one, you see, this is just uh, another version of the logo without the name. And I just made this for, like, clothing and stuff, but... It uses the same deal in here. What we have is a basic five star and a pinwheel inside of it to give you that um, three dimensional star kind of a feel. So, anyways, let's start a new logo with some uh, with some primitives in it. Just drag some out. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So. Let's start doing it then. So yeah, let's see. How does that look? Maybe a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Like so, cool. Next one. Yeah. Smaller as well. Not that much though. Want them to be kind of similar. I actually made a little too many of these squares at the same time. Well, that was kind of a mistake on my part. You know, you want to take things, do things quick, but at the other time, don't over. Uh, do it too much. And there's also some cool keyboard shortcuts here where one is to move it around, two on your keyboard is to resize it, and three gives you a rotate. Uh, so that's how I'm doing it without actually physically going up here to click the tools. The other keys don't actually have a shortcut. So yeah, that's pretty much how they work. Alright, cool. So there's that square, and let's just keep getting smaller with these. That 
that is the important bit. And this one actually doesn't get smaller enough, so I'm actually gonna change it up some more. Yeah, that seems about right. Cool. Now, we are actually going to be doing something with these. So, just you wait. Eventually, something will be done. Alright, let's just keep shrinking them down. And, you know, it's actually faster to just duplicate rather than drag in a new square. Duplicate, drag up, shrink down. Move down, and what you want to look for is the spacing there. Or at least that's what I'm doing in this particular scenario. And you can actually, you know, change change your background to see what this would look like on stuff. By default it's gray, but you know, you can put it on a black, a white, white skin, black skin. So you can see white doesn't show up at all on skin. Uh, but your primitive logos, you want to design them in white or in grayscale, because uh, that allows you to tint the whole logo uh, very easily. And there are some effects here too, like I can make it look like it's graffiti, spikes, you know, camouflage and all that. Um, so yeah, that's like if I wanted to make a camo layer, um, I could actually just just do this here. Let's drop a big ass square in it and camouflage overlay. And there we go. Now I have some grayscale camo. And when I bring that into the editor and I can change its color. Like for example, I could have a blue camo. Cool, right? Um, yeah. Much simpler way to do it than I did. <laughs> of course. Wouldn't be me, would it? Just shrink this bad boy down. Yeah, alright, that should be enough. So let's select all of these squares and shift them up to about there. That looks pretty, f pretty fine. Actually, let's do the other thing that I needed to do first. That is to stretch them all the way across. Every last one of these just goes across. And in this case, you don't move your mouse up and down as you do with um, with some features. You move it left to right, well, which makes sense because, you know, you're stretching things across, aren't you? All right, so then from here up, sh whoa. Whoops, I want to undo that resizing, because I selected the wrong tool. Cool. So, up again. And... Again, and... Just keep spacing them out, and let's duplicate one, move up, and at this point I can just change the vertical size only of it, and there we go, and then up again, and I think this will probably be the last one. Let's make it especially thin. And cool. Alright, so that kind of gives me the effect that I want. So let's save as um, stripes with a Z because we're badass. Yeah. Alright. And the reason we did all of this was... to get to the clothing designer. 
That's right. We're we're doing it big here, guys. We're doing it big. We're designing clothing. Yeah, so that's this outfit right here. Um, and then the other one that I made was this. This is the one that you guys saw, but now you see I have my logo on the back, and the one with the star on the back pocket of the jeans. <laughs> that's pretty much all I did with that one. So, anyways. Um, there we go. Customize you. And this needs to go. I was just messing around there. So, let's select... No, 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 no. Damn it. Uh, I lost my spacing on that. Let's see. I want it to be somewhere around there. Cool. New symbol. Symbols. And there's all the stuff that I've made, yeah. And there's also some presets I've unlocked, like a monkey and fun stuff like that. So let's apply that preset. We want it to be at the stomach level. And we want it to wrap around the stomach. See how easy that is? You you can apply camo very easily like that. Did not know that was there until recently. And, you know, we want to um, have these stripes starting down like right there. We actually want them to be going up a little more. Yeah, we want this to be a little bit, you know, bigger of a... Alright, let's actually zoom in on this and see how it looks. Yeah, that's pretty much the intended effect right there. And then as you can see, since they're white, we can very, very easily change the color to whatever we want it to be. Well, in this case, I want it to be the very best, like no one ever was. Right. Cool. And we can save that now. Alright, coolio. So, now we've got that. We've got our little logo on the chest, holster on the back, you know, a knife, some cool stuff. Now I actually want to see how much customization they let you do on this bad boy right here. And, yeah, let's drop... Let's drop one of these on there and see how that looks. Huh. Well, it certainly is interesting, let me tell you. <laughs> Alright, to shrinkage it down. And you see the symbol ends up being kind of odd, let's say. Odd would definitely be the right word in this situation. Because as you see, it gets really distorted when it's on there and it doesn't actually show up on any of the other pieces. Um, see what I mean though? It just gets very distorted. So, maybe that's not quite the thing that we were looking for. So let's trash that, but <coughs> How my voice, uh, what could possibly be more interesting is maybe, ooh, a monkey. Monkeys are cool. Mm. Or, how about a square? Let's see what we can do with a square. If we just size it down, move it around, call it a square, um, make it kind of parallel, and the thing that really interests me here is will it wrap around when you uh, stretch it out or um, yeah I just want to stretch it out that way 
and then move it and rotate in a such a way that it will hopefully wrap around and holy crap a doodle do what the frick wrap wrap the decal around all right there we go like so except that we want to angle the rotation maybe what the hell does this do oh this rotates it you see okay interesting you know what I'm thinking is uh let's apply that to there yeah let's select the waist ish area and wrap it around there right and we'll uh, move it down to here to give it that nice striped belt kind of a look mm -hmm. just such an odd angle to work on that's all I'm saying here might want to increase the height just a little bit while we move it around and such. Alright, that's cool. So now let's make it one shade darker than our belt. I was thinking, what if you have it start all the way down over here? How will that look? You know, maybe rotate it around some. No, it doesn't doesn't do that. Alright, well, let's change the height of it, kind of, ish. You know, move it back up. Uh, to be totally honest, uh, it's interesting. Let's leave it and add a new preset. I want that monkey. And I want it now! Yeah, buddy. There we go. Alright, cool. So, that monkey's gonna have to get downsized, though, so he'll actually fit. And then... Yeah, and then let's rotate him this way. Kind of move him over, rotate him this way. Size him. Cool. Now I have a monkey belt. Alright, let's save that, and there we go, alright, cool. So there we have it, we now have all of these stripes and symbols, and our pants are kind of left with nothing. So we're gonna put a quick logo on our pants as well, or see how, or attempt to anyways. Bam. Alright, there we go. We're just going to put it right here on this pocket. And just keep the aspect ratio rotated a bit to fit the pocket. Cool. And you know, that just gives some variation. More than anything else. So let's save that. And there we have it. That has been an episode of customization with Kamikat. Lol. Oh. Yeah. And when you come out, it takes a little while for stuff to load and such. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, right on. I just realized you guys don't actually know who this character is. Um. Alright, so maybe it's a little bit of explanation time. Let's stand in this light here. Yeah. 
That's that's some pretty good light. I like it. Um, so yeah, this character's name is Nastya, or Nasty A, as apparently the Americans on the server call her. The only primary weapon that she has ever used in her entire lifetime is the stock Star 556. I have purposely not bought another gun with her. Um, Silver 7 Threat, and I have over 1200 lifetime kills. Alright, the NFA 9 Secondary, I haven't gotten a kill with it yet. I'm actually just testing it out. But as you can see, I have 8 plus 12 kills. So, 20 kills with a pistol, uh, 12 kills with grenades, and 6 arrests total. So, subtract 20, 12, and 6, and everything else was done with the star. Uh, pretty standard, happy landings, clotting 1. Um, as far as achievements go, uh, they don't matter for shit. Um, what does matter though is that I have the Ram Man from doing raids and none of the other ones unlocked yet because as a police officer all you do is raid buildings literally. I don't know why that's the way it works out but it is. Um, and you see it's with the Star 556. I'm Rifleman rank 8 working towards 9. Um, and yeah I've gotten pretty far with my agents here with the Prentice Tigers. Um, I've gotten up to Daryl Kent and Byung Lee. And with the Praetorians, uh, Sabat, not really that impressive, but Miguel is the farthest that I've gotten in their chain. Um, the problem here is that I don't really have anyone in financial, so I've been doing Waterfront a lot lately, and I don't like Waterfront as much as financial. It's just the way things work. But yeah, Coolio. So, the reason I use the star is so people can't complain about my weapon. Um, you know, because people... It's, it's a stock weapon, basically. There's no mods in it, and everyone has one. So, basically, what it comes down to is it comes down to player skill. Anytime I kill someone, it's simply because I'm better than them, I was in a better position, um, I started firing faster, I have better trigger control, or something like that. It's not I killed them because I have a scoped Entech from the Armus Marketplace, or because, um, because, you know, I fucking have an Entech modded with Hunting Sight 3 and Cooling Jacket 2 and can just spray out six shots at long range before the recoil even hits. Um, it's really none of that. And yeah, this is this is actual people stuff. You see, you can these are display points, and you can choose to activate them, and they'll actually stick around. Uh, the cool thing about this character, though, is that um, Byung Lee is the last contact before the boss, so I've actually gotten pretty far in terms of progression, despite, as I said, using the star and only the star. Um, also, I have a pretty cool car, and since this is an underpopulated district, I'll actually be able to show you. Um, since I don't have premium, I can only have seven, seven decals on the entire vehicle. But that's what it looks like. Um, you know, you give it. I gave it a splash around the front fender and the sweep, kind of a thing, to uh, accentuate its body lines, and then put my logo on it and gave it the world's coolest racing stripe because it, you see it has a lot of texture in it while being only one simple logo so it was quite conservative I don't have premium or any of that so I can't really make complex creations you know like Raven 1 2 3 4 five. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, this is also another guy who doesn't have premium. And this guy, one, two, three, four, five. Plus the gradient makes it six. The flames, seven. So, this is dubious. But yeah, no, you can definitely do some pretty cool stuff with car customization in this game. 
Oh, and up here we have a very, very customized Jericho by a premium user. They can have up to 100 decals on theirs. And as you can see, you can just do all sorts of things. Let's, let's activate this display point here and this one here. Mm, yeah. And you see they're Jerichos. They're like um, the fastest cars in the game and they're unique to Enforcers. And the game as an enforcer is also harder, surprisingly enough, um, just because the missions um, tend to screw you a lot more than they tend to screw anyone else. Uh, so, yeah, there's also a surprising amount of Russian people that play this game. It's kind of interesting like that. I also have no idea how I am on time with this episode, so I'll check that and get back here later. Maybe we can sneak in some action. That would be great, wouldn't be? Some, some finally, finally some action, you know, you get to watch me do some stuff. drinks they taste good in the morning oh and before i go check the video length one final thing to take care of here oh yeah this is also the auction house where you can buy mods without unlocking them uh but uh the cool thing about this game is like progression um i mean rolls yeah you see um this unlocks new grenades for you when you get kills with grenades um this unlocks um, new modified pistols, and this rifleman, for example, it unlocks hunting sites, the modification, and weapons with slots. Pointman unlocks cooling jacket, um, and like reflex sight, and you know they they just unlock modifications that are actually genuinely useful. Uh, so yeah, let's, let's go up to this display point here and activate it. And there you have it. There's my logo. Activated on this screen here. So isn't that... That's kind of cool, right? The way this game just lets people display their stuff. Um, there's also graffiti points in the, in the open world where you can do that. And I know how to get to a couple of them in Waterfront, so I can show that off. Oh, right. The thing that I wanted to do, though, is... Uh, there's also themes that you can have in this game before, besides your graffiti and stuff. And, um... They get played whenever you kill someone, and I made this one at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning after not sleeping for, like, days on end, and it's the most absurd thing ever. Just listen. Hahaha. <laughs> It's just so funny to think that people have to hear that every time they die. <laughs> oh man, that is so rich. Anyways, I'll be back if we still have time. Actually, you know what, we're at 28 minutes. So, this is when I bid you adieu. Comic Cat signing off. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. And uh, next time around, we will be showing some star action. Hopefully on a slightly coordinated team. Um, I have a couple of friends that I really like to play with that are genuinely good. Um, he's good. He's alright. He's... I mean, she. She is pretty cool. He's very good. These two guys right here are the ones that I usually try and play with if they're online. You know, we go Skype it up and do it legit. Um, surprisingly good Russian. Um, a lot of the Russians here suck. Um, this guy, I don't know why I have him on here. I really don't like him. He's like the stereotypical Asian. Uh, this guy is good. Good. I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much how it works. You just add random people and, you know, hope for the best. So let's see, they're all in the same districts. So let's, so I'm gonna go play the game, but uh, yeah.
uh, hopefully at some point later on I'll be able to bring you some coordinated team gameplay and stuffage. You know, good stuff, good stuff.